Hi friends, welcome on board for another project. This time I want to introduce this LED emergency light or LED torch circuit. The maximum power rating of this LED light is around 4.5 watts, so it delivers a good amount of lighting in emergency situations. For example, when you're stuck next to the road and you want to diagnose the car engine for any malfunction in the belts, fuses, relays, oil, and etc. This is the bottom view, almost a solid ground plane. As usual, I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and shared the PCB and schematic with my friends using the Altium 365 Cloud Space to receive their edits and feedbacks live on the cloud. You can power the board using this USB Type-C connector so you can either use a mobile phone because nowadays all of the mobile phone use a USB Type-C connector. So you can either power this board using a mobile phone or a power bank. However, the power rating when you connect this to the mobile phone is limited to 2 point or 2.5 watts, 2.2, around 2.2 watts. Because why? Because the current delivery of this port this USB Type-C port on the mobile phone is limited to around 500 milliamps. However, there is no limit when you connect this to a power bank, so you get, you get the maximum 4.5 watts. The next point is, when you solder this board, be careful when you solder these LEDs, because these LEDs are quite sensitive to temperature. So you should solder them fast and with low temperature, maximum 300 degrees. So I recommend you to use one of these micro solder stations and one of these tips for fast uh, soldering, okay? Got it? Okay, now I connect this to the power and show you how it works. So the light is quite intense. Uh, I cannot look at it directly and this power is around 2.2 watts because I had changed a component, but I will tell you in the schematic, to work with the mobile phone. So the power of 4.0 watts is around twice. The power is two times more. Uh, so if you compare this with a single LED torch on the mobile phone, this circuit has 24 LEDs. In the last step, I will examine the switching and switching frequency of the LED driver. So let me put this mobile phone on the device because the light, uh, I cannot work with such a light and connect this oscilloscope probe on the output of the switching chip. And there we go. This is the switching frequency exactly. 1.4 megahertz and the amplitude is around 8.48 let's say 8.5 volts so it says because in this circuit three leds on series and i have used eight leds or eight rows in parallel so a forward voltage of each led is around 2.8 volts a little bit more because why as i said the amplitude of this pulse is around 8.5 volts. So the output voltage for, for all of these LEDs is around this voltage, 8.5 volts. Okay, got it? In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB. Just stay tuned. All right, this is the homepage of Altium Designer where you have access to all of these nice tutorials. If you follow this link in my YouTube video description, it allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. And one thing to mention is that you don't need to purchase a license to download the projects from the Altium 365 Cloud Space. You just need to register on the website using your email. Anyway, here is a schematic and this document is the PCB layout. Let's explain the schematic. This is a USB Type-C connector to connect the power to the board 
and these two resistors are to indicate that this is the load side not the charger side because as you know USB type C connector connectors are massively used for charging and these two resistors on the CC1 and CC2 pins will indicate or will define if this connector is on the charger side or on the load side so for the charger side these two resistors should be pull up these two capacitors are for noise reduction and to stabilize the controller the controller part number is MP3202 so let's check this on octopart MP3202 so this first one is correct so it says this is a uh, this is a component from the monolithic power systems the maximum input voltage is 6 volts the maximum output current is 1.3 amps and the switching frequency is 1 megahertz and here is the price in a variety of distributors authorized and non-authorized inventory history and etc check this website yourself later on let's come back to the schematic this r1 to enable the chip however you can remove this resistor and inject your pwm pulse to the p to the en pin to enable the feature something like a deeming feature this is a shotkey diode an essential part number of an essential component of the of a boost converter and these are the LEDs I have selected this package size 2835 0.2 watts and my selected color temperature is 4000 K because I prefer uh, the lights similar to daylight however you can uh, select lower temperature which which uh, the light is similar to yellow and higher color temperature it goes to the pure white this capacitor uh, is to stabilize the output that suggests that data sheet uh, uh, value is around 1 microfarad between 1 or 4.7 microfarad however I selected this one to stabilize the output even more and reduce the noise and here it is these two resistors which I mentioned in the previous step these two resistors define the output current if you want to connect this board to your mobile phone the value of r4 and r5 should be 1 or 1 person okay and if you want to use this with your power bank and whatever other device except mobile phone then you can use 500 milliohm resistor one person for both of them i i will explain this also in the article so let's go to the PCB all right as it is clear this is a two layer PCB board the red is the top and blue is the bottom layer let me show you the board in 3d for example one of these options Altium 3d dark green I prefer this one and this is the top side here is the bottom side no component on the bottom side if I press the shift and right click of the mouse I can rotate the board like this with any angle this is a very nice tool indeed for visual inspection I have found many problems in my designs just by using this tool let's come back to the board I want to explain the PCB we can divide the board from here do you see that just from here so the right is the controller and the left belongs to the LEDs to design a PCB for such a high frequency and high current boost converter you should follow two things the first one is that you should never use any track so instead you should use these planes instead of tracks to carry a high amount of current and the second point is the grounding as you see I have implemented a star shape ground I mean no loop ground on the top this loop is very small this is not considered a loop and 
the ground on the top is connected to the bottom ground using these uh, vias. So if I show you the bottom layer and enable the single layer mode, as you see, the bottom layer is a solid ground plane. And this is just a small area that the ground is not solid. So all of these techniques are to reduce the length of the ground pass and to reduce the impedance of the ground. It means the better performance for the circuit, lower noise and lower AMI. For the LEDs, as you see, I have implemented these planes also. I have pl implemented like this to carry the, the current better and also to dissipate the heat of the LEDs. The standard thickness of the PCB board is 1.6 mm. You don't need to use a smaller thickness. However, if you are very concerned about the heating of the LEDs, which you shouldn't, you can use a smaller thickness for the LEDs. So the bottom layer get com comes closer to the top layer and dissipate the heat even better. But in my opinion, it's not necessary. Such a design dissipate the heat flawlessly. So okay, I think I covered most of the point. I hope you liked this video. We will do something else in the next video.